I've been thinking about making a copy of the bone food for a couple of years now. And I think the moment of inspiration for me was um, I was in a flip convention and it was in one of these big and inspiring hotel rooms and I heard a concert played by Rachel Brown on an original eight key bone flute and it was like nothing I've heard before. The sound was very special, very clear and very resonant, but also very warm and her playing was exquisite. I thought there's something very special there and that's something that is not available uh, in the modern copies that we have, in the models that people play nowadays. And I thought it might be worthwhile uh, to go and make a copy of this kind of flute. The name of Tebel Boehm is familiar to anybody who played flute in a high school band uh, because he's the inventor of what we call today just the flute, the modern flute. Uh, this is the silver flute with um, cylindrical body and conical head joint. So in 1832, he comes up with this uh, first model of the modern flute. But what people are less familiar with is um, his story before he invented this flute. By 1832, Boehm was 38, and he had already had a 20-year-long career as a performer, as a virtuoso. I think from the age of 14, he was starting to play flute, and he was uh, one of those child prodigies. And the flute he was playing and was an eight-keyed simple system flute. It's a conical instrument with relatively simple key mechanism that Boehm played and eventually also tried to improve and perfect. From an early age, he's uh, trained as a jeweler because he grew up in a um, goldsmith family and he was working as a, as a jeweler and a goldsmith in his father's shop. So in Bern, we have a very special combination of a virtuoso on one hand, a great musician, uh, that was performing uh, and touring throughout Europe. But he's also a goldsmith, and he's got that kind of fine eye for detail and for design. And his flutes really show those two qualities. So he decides to establish a flute workshop and make flutes and sell them. And he starts by sending a letter to the king, uh, announcing that he's made this wonderful model, saying that it's an instrument that's very easy to perform on, has a great tonal range through its entire range, telling why this is a, a new and exciting instrument. And a year and a half later, he writes another letter to the king, obviously asking for a loan, and he says that he's already sold 60 of these flutes. So in, within a year and a half, the workshop of Ben made 60 flutes, which averages about four flutes a month, which is an amazing amount, amazing speed to be producing these instruments. The process of making a copy of this kind of flute uh, starts with going to museums and private collections and looking at as many original instruments as I possibly can. Uh, I spent a couple of months doing that, and finally I found an original in the Metropolitan Museum in New York that I really liked, and I spent a whole day with inst that instrument, 
measuring it and looking at all the fine details. And I love that part of the work because for me it's like spending time with Turbo Boom. It's like having a, a lesson with him. I'm looking at all of the details on these instruments and I'm trying to figure out how did he do it and why did he do it that way and not another way. And especially with Berm's instrument, the level of workmanship is absolutely amazing. It's very clean, it's very simple, very streamlined, but it's also obviously done by a person who really knew what they were doing. So I was trying to look for ways to bring that into my copy as well. So for, especially for this copy, I had to um, come up with new ways of doing things, like new ways of soldering keys, of cutting tone holes. And with Berm's flutes, some of the parts were a real puzzle to figure out. We know from Berm, um, from his writings, that he has studied all of the flutes of his time. He knew them very well. So he knew English flutes and German and French and Viennese. When he made his own model, he tried to kind of combine the best points of all these instruments into one instrument. I think this model is a masterpiece in terms of ergonomics and streamlining. It has a French embouchure and voicing. Uh, it's got German style keys. It's got Viennese and German mix of fingerings. Um, so it's not representing a national style, it's kind of an international flute representing Bohm's style. And as such, it would be great to play any piece of repertoire from the first half of the 19th century. Thank you.